Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. After the death of a five-year-old boy, Local 4 is asking tough questions. It is horrifying. It's outrageous. Um, it's, shock, it's a shock to the conscience. Tonight, what we've learned about children who have died in Michigan's child welfare system. Ethan Belcher's aunts had called Child Protective Services concerned about his safety in his parents' home. And after running into roadblocks, getting answers about what a CPS did to care for this child, we started asking questions about cases in the system. State revealed to Local 4 they've investigated hundreds of deaths of children who were involved with Michigan's child welfare system. Rob Maloney, live tonight with the troubling numbers and the reaction. Rod. Yeah, Devin, the state separates the child welfare system into three parts, foster care, child protective services, and adoption. They're required to report child deaths, and then those are supposed to be investigated. And what we found out is that while many of the, the cases of child deaths do not come from child abuse, the numbers of child deaths from suspected abuse are downright chilling. Five-year-old Ethan Belcher died two weeks ago. Prosecutors charged his parents, Valerie Hamilton and stepfather Shane Shelton, with felony murder and torture. It turns out, though, based on the Michigan Office of Children's Ombudsman numbers, Ethan's death is all too common. In its most recent annual reports, the OCO tells us state law requires Michigan child welfare agencies to report child deaths when there is prior involvement within 24 months preceding the death. Each case gets investigated. Between 2020 and 2021, the OCO received 741 preliminary death alerts, and most of those are not due to child abuse, they say. But the Ombudsman's office does tell Local 4, quote, child abuse and neglect was highly suspected in 135 of the 741 child deaths in 2020 and 2021, end quote. The disturbing math says in Michigan, one child died in or related to the child welfare system every five days. For some perspective, we turn to someone who deals with child welfare regularly, Claude Nice Holloman, who directs the Genesee County nonprofit called Voices of Children. It is horrifying. It's outrageous. Um, it's shock. It's a shock to the conscience. And but what I recognize is that it's 135 kids, and we as a community have to do something. It's not just. Um, child Protective Services. It's not just um, those of us who are working in the system. Ethan's family did intervene, though, and he ended up removed from the home and then put back. State Senator Jim Runstead is furious after introducing a bill last week looking for more CPS transparency. It's appalling. And what is so uh, disheartening is that we can't get information. I would like to know in every single one of these cases what went wrong. Was there, was there a catastrophic failure like there was in, in Ethan Belcher's case? We simply don't know. So we've, we've got to really rip open this system. Here's a statement from Susanna Shkreli, the Michigan Children Ombudsman. The death of Ethan Belcher is a tragedy and my heart goes out to his family and friends. My office received notice of Ethan's death on January 22nd and has begun the investigative process. At the conclusion of the investigation, any recommendation for changes in the child welfare system are sent to the appropriate agencies and published for the public to view." End quote. Back to you. So Rod, the office says they will publish the recommendations. What about information about this specific case? Well, that could end up in a report, and we won't necessarily have that for quite some time. But here's the thing. We put in a FOIA for this case, and they told us flat out that CPS is exempt from the Freedom of yeah. Information Act. And so Jim Runstead says that's what his bill is all about, changing yep. that part of this system to make it public. It has been so opaque for so long. Exactly right. All right, Rod. Families with a heartbreaking bond are making, uh, making it their mission to raise awareness about the dangers of opioids. Yeah, they all lost loved ones to fentanyl poisoning, and they're hoping billboards like this one along I-75 in Auburn Hills can spare other families from the same pain. Sean Lay has her story. Good evening from Auburn Hills. We're invited by a big group of families to walk through the brush and mud here to get a good up close look at that big billboard up there along I-75. This meeting we have with the parents, absolutely heartbreaking, but very important. And here's why. Jane Toscano drove here from Grand Rapids today to see this billboard for the very first time. I wanted to start crying, but I held it back. 
my grandson was 21. He thought he was buying a pill. What he got was a fake Percocet. It was fentanyl, and he died upstairs in his room. These parents and grandparents are part of a club that grows by 300 deaths every day, not drug overdoses, but fentanyl poisonings. This billboard, a flashing red flag to parents driving by that your child could be next. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Every minute of it breaks my heart, but we have to do it. We have to do it. We have to put the warnings out and we have to be the voice that our kids can't be anymore. Rebecca Elmuscud lost her son, Brandon, who took a pill that he did not know was 100% fentanyl. She's with ForThemWeFight.org and the Billboard Project and worked hard to get this message up here. A lot of emotions, probably just, I want, my goal is to spread awareness. I want people to understand that these kids, families are being affected by this. They're being murdered. It's, these are not overdoses, these are poisonings. These kids are not asking to die. We're not gonna stop. We will be their voice because my son's life their, their babies, they mattered. He mattered. We very much appreciate the Angel families meeting us at that billboard to show it to us today. And to be clear, guys, we're not talking about drug overdoses. We're talking about a loved one ingesting or buying a pill like a Xan thinking it's a Xanax, but it's 100% pure fentanyl, absolutely deadly, bringing in from the bringing being brought in uh, to the country. These families say that needs to stop. The country needs to step up, of course, and people need to be held accountable. Now, the organizations we're talking about for them, we fight.org. Also, the Billboard Project will link you to the to them on our website. Click on Detroit.com. And guys, there's two versions of the billboard on that one screen we showed you. They can only fit 80 loved ones on those billboards. Back to you. So strong of that family to uh, want to share their story to raise awareness and hopefully help other families. Sean, we appreciate that. That's right. Governor Whitmer rolls out a Democratic plan to help with inflation, and it includes sending every Michigan taxpayer a direct check. $180 rebate checks would go to every tax filer. Part of a package that would lower the tax for both private and public pensions as well. Governor says that could save 500,000 homes about $1,000. Plan also calls for an increase in the earned income tax credit up to 30%. The governor says that would equate to about $3,100. Republicans, though, are instead pushing for a rollback of Michigan's income tax rate. It might automatically be cut, though, because of an increase in tax revenue. That was law was put into place so that when our government got too much money, an automatic trigger would happen. And that's what we're looking at right now. We're in a position that we can actually give real financial relief long term. When we focus on these three methods of putting money back in people's pockets, we can guarantee it gets there. We can move fast and it's a heck of a lot more meaningful for folks. So votes on the proposal are expected to come up this week. Democrats, of course, have a majority in both the Senate and the House, uh, but some Republican support would be needed for this to take effect immediately. We'll follow it all week. All right, a help me Hank scam alert for anybody watching us on Xfinity Cable. Police say scam artists are using a familiar tactic to target customers. Police in Hazel Park have gotten several complaints about this consumer. Investigator Hank Winchester is live with the warning, and Hank, this involved Xfinity and Target. Yeah, and Kimberly, these stories just break my heart because in this case, you've got a senior that lost $1,000. She snatched up Target gift cards here because she was told if she sent those to the rep, the rep, the person she thought was a rep from Xfinity, she'd get a great deal on her cable bill. But as you'll see, all she got was scammed. I thought, well, I'm one of those seniors that got caught. Donna Turner told me she thought she was getting a big deal on her Xfinity cable and internet bill, but instead she got scammed big time. I said, oh no, this is good. This is a good deal. Donna got emails and phone calls from somebody claiming to be an Xfinity rep. Her promotional rate was set to expire and she wanted a new deal and was offered even bigger savings. All she needed to do was buy two $500 Target gift cards and share that information with the alleged representative. She did just that and she says she knew almost instantly she'd been scammed. I said, well, that don't sound right. And he said, oh no, this is a good promotion. Um, Target is backing us up. And I said, well, I don't know. He says, well, I, I'll guarantee you. And then we're gonna throw in three new 
I phoned. Police in Hazel Park telling Help Me Hank that Donna isn't the only recent victim. In fact, this scam spreading all over Metro Detroit and not just tied to Xfinity. DTE imposters also making their move right now. Remember this, if somebody offers you a deal that sounds great or says that you can pay with a gift card, Remember, that is likely a scam. And I said, but you're going to get caught. If you don't get caught here, you'll get caught at the pearly gates. Yeah, karma, right? A big thanks to Donna because she wanted to share this story, hoping that it doesn't happen to you. A, a good reminder for all of us, maybe to have a conversation with our parents or grandparents. These scammers, they target seniors. Let them know the dangers of these gift card scams. They are running rampant right now all over Metro Detroit. We're live here. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Okay, Hank, thank you. A series of bomb threats made against Walmart stores in Metro Detroit today may be part of a nationwide problem. Deputies say someone made threatening phone calls to stores in Rochester Hills, White Lake Township, and Canton. The man threatened to blow up the store if a cash ransom wasn't paid. The stores were evacuated and searched. Deputies say the threats were not credible. They're working with investigators nationally to find the caller. Things warming up around Metro Detroit. Those piles of snow are going to be melting as we take a live look from our Mount Clemens Sky Cam. Oh, yeah, beautiful night tonight. Fort yeah. Warren Meteorologist Kim Adams here with uh, uh, we're tracking a little bit of rain, not snow this yeah. time. No rain to go along with that melting. So Thursday there will be a lot of melting going on and a lot of water on the roads. But I want to show you something new on our Fort Warren weather app. It's called My Picks, M I Picks, and it's easy. You can just upload pictures of your pets, the weather, your kids, whatever you'd like to show us. This is from Doreen. It's her, it's her pup in Detroit. So sweet. So just go to our 41 weather app or any of our apps here at local four and you can upload a my pick. 32 degrees at City Airport, 29 in Mount Clemens, 32 at Pontiac. It's colder this afternoon than it was yesterday. We had a very weak cold front come through last evening and it's left behind a little chilly air, but that's not going to last very long. Tonight we'll see temperatures drop down to right around 30 degrees and then they'll start to go up actually overnight tonight. Tomorrow we'll have southerly winds that will warm us up quickly into the mid to upper 40s. We will have rain in the morning, but clearing out in the afternoon. I'll have more on this nice warm up headed our way coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Kim, we have a lot more ahead here at six. Let's check in with Dr. McGeorge.